Good morning. My name is Chris Ndukumana. I'm the host of the Kanuka broadcast. You're about to listen to today's broadcast translated from French to English. Be blessed. Today's Thursday. We're continuing with our teaching on changing our mindset. I hope these teachings on changing your mentality have made an impact on your life because it's impossible to listen to these teachings and remain the same person. Even for me, as I teach, it impacts me too. There has to be an impact because the word of God is like a sword. The word of God is a mirror. That's what the Bible says. It's like looking into a mirror where you see what's wrong and then you correct it. So, the word of God is meant to transform our lives and shape the way we see things. Last Thursday, we saw that many people start out doing good things like supporting God's work, helping the poor, and giving regularly, just as they've been taught. But over time, they get discouraged. Many people start strong, but they often end up giving up. Why do they give up? Because they were taught poorly. I've seen many Christians who start supporting God's work, they help with evangelism, they assist God's servants, they help widows and orphans, but it doesn't last. Why doesn't it last? That's why we're teaching this. There has to be a change in mentality. It doesn't last because they were poorly taught. When you're told that giving will make you rich, that you'll become a millionaire, that you'll earn a lot of money, and then you don't see that money coming in, you get discouraged. It's disheartening. You have to understand that everything you do requires motivation. For example, you wake up early in the morning, you take the bus or train, even when it's raining, and you still go to work. You do that because you know you'll get paid at the end of the month. If there were no salary, you probably wouldn't go to work. People push themselves to go to work because they're motivated by their paycheck. It's true that you might love your job, which is a good thing, but if you knew you wouldn't be paid, it would be hard to continue because you have bills to pay, electricity, rent, fuel, and many other expenses. So, you go to work because you expect a paycheck at the end of the month. Now, if you're supporting God's work, you're helping widows and the poor with the wrong motivation. You think that you'll become wealthy in return. You're doing it because you were taught incorrectly. You were shown the gain. You were told how much money you'd make. And when you don't see that money, you get discouraged and stop because you think it's not working. Another thing I've noticed is that some people are taught that if they don't give regularly to the church, they'll be cursed. They're told they'll lose their job, have accidents, or face some kind of misfortune. So, they give out of fear of a curse. They keep it up for a month, two months, maybe three, but over time, they get discouraged. Eventually, they might go months without giving anything, yet they notice that there's no curse, their job continues, their children are fine, and life goes on. They realize they were misled, and that's why they stop giving, thinking everything will be okay even if they don't. This is the mindset that needs to change. You must understand that we don't give to be blessed, we give because we have already been blessed. Let me repeat that, we don't give to be blessed, we give because we have received a blessing. That means you give from what God has already given you. If God has blessed you, you then bless others, you support God's work because of what you've received from Him. If your mentality is to give just to receive, you'll quickly lose motivation and you won't be able to continue. And that's why God may delay in blessing you because He wants to change your mindset. He wants to remove this wrong attitude from your heart. Don't be a manipulator. Don't give with ulterior motives. Don't act like a businessman, trying to make deals with God. Do it as someone who is grateful for what God has done for them. If you're supporting the poor, the widows, God's work, or evangelism just to get a great blessing in return or to be prosperous, the day you don't see that promotion or that financial breakthrough, you'll give up because your motivation was wrong from the start. Last Thursday, I concluded by saying that there should be at least one person who thanks God for the blessing that came through you. Is there anyone out there who is blessed because of you, who can give thanks to God because of what he has done through you? When I say this, some might think, I help my little brothers, I support my cousins, I take care of my parents. But I'm not talking about your family. I'm not talking about your parents, your spouse, your children, or your relatives. I'm talking about helping someone who isn't related to you, someone you're helping purely for God's glory. If you only help your family, you're no different from non-believers. There are many non-believers who are very loyal to their families. Even the most notorious criminal in the world takes care of his family. Thieves, sinners, and adulterers all look after their families. So, where's the difference? In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This verse refers to someone without faith, someone who doesn't believe in God, yet still takes care of their family. And you, who have the Holy Spirit, who are a child of God, you should do even more. Taking care of your own family is natural, it's normal, it's not extraordinary. What's extraordinary is taking care of someone who isn't part of your family, and doing it solely for the glory of God. So, the question remains, is there someone out there who is blessed by you, who receives something from you, and can thank God because of what God is doing through you? And I'm not talking about your spouse, your little brother, or your parents. I'm talking about someone you're helping because they're in need, someone with whom you share what God has given you, purely for the glory of God. Does that person exist? 
We'll come back to this question next Thursday. It's now time to continue our study of the book of Nehemiah. I've been talking to you about the power of praise and worship. We saw how David came, and through praise alone, King Saul was delivered. I had asked you to read chapter 12, but today, I'd like to go back to chapter 11. We'll start on chapter 12 in tomorrow's Kanguka broadcast. In chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, we see that the leader of the Levites, the sons of Azaph, the singers, had a special role. We see that the Levites and the singers, specifically the sons of Azaph, had a unique role in the house of God. Verse 23 says that there was a special order from the king, and a fixed salary was given to them every day. It's clear that the singers in the house of God were paid daily. They spent the entire day praising God, singing in the house of God, and they were compensated for it. Now, why were they paid? It's important to understand that this wasn't a salary because they were working for the king. No, it was simply so that they could remain in the house of God and not have to look for ways to earn a living elsewhere. They had families and other responsibilities, but to keep them dedicated to staying in the house of God, worshipping and praising, they needed to be supported. So, when the king talked about a salary, it was about taking care of the singers so they could stay in God's house. We're used to the idea that pastors are the ones who are supported, who work full-time and who are often compared to the Levites or the priests. But we should understand that anyone who serves in the house of God should ideally be able to commit fully, if possible, so that the spiritual work can be done excellently. I know some people might not understand this, but it's for the benefit of the body of Christ. For example, there might be a pastor serving a church who also has to work a secular job and then come back in the evening to take care of the church. From my own experience, I've seen many pastors struggling because they work outside the church. They often have bosses who aren't Christians, and they deal with challenges like corruption or other frustrations, sometimes even facing mistreatment. When they come back in the evening, they're exhausted, both physically and spiritually, which is dangerous because they're spending more time in the world than in the presence of God. Remember what happened in the book of Acts. At first, the apostles were doing everything themselves, they were serving tables and handling all the tasks. But they soon realized that this wasn't sustainable, so they appointed deacons. The deacons took care of the practical matters, the material things, the tables, and the Holy Communion, while the apostles dedicated themselves entirely to prayer and the Word of God. Let me say this again, if a church is still young and doesn't yet have the resources to support its pastors or servants of God, then, of course, the pastor needs to work to make a living, to pay bills, and to take care of his family. But when the church is able to support the pastor, it's always better for the pastor to be fully dedicated to prayer and the Word of God. When a pastor is fully committed to the Word of God and prayer, it benefits the church greatly. However, if the church isn't yet capable of providing that support, you must wait until the time comes when it is possible. But ideally, it's best for the pastor to remain constantly in the presence of God and focused on his word. Some people might say, but Paul made tents to support himself. I encourage you to read the Bible carefully. Paul didn't make tents every day. There were times when he did, but most of the time, he was fully dedicated to the ministry because he was supported by churches like the ones in Ephesus and Philippi. He was fully engaged in preaching, teaching, and traveling for evangelism. Yet, there were moments when he made tents to remain independent, especially when he was among the Corinthians. He himself said that it was his right to receive support from the Corinthians, but he chose not to take their gifts because they were too spiritually immature. But when he served the Philippians or the Ephesians, he accepted their support and worked full-time in the ministry. So, while there were times when he made tents, there were also long periods when he was fully devoted to his calling. We've learned something important here, the singers and musicians play a crucial role in the church. Today, in many churches, singers and musicians are often overlooked, even though their role is spiritually significant. Their purpose is to create an atmosphere of worship and praise, something we truly need in the church. It's not about putting on a show or entertaining, it's about inviting the presence of God. Tomorrow, we will continue with chapter 12. May I am bless you, and have a wonderful day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.